in this video we are going to talk about the most basic way to use a computer. Now a computer consists of many different devices. CPU, memory, a disk, screen, a mouse and a keyboard, an audio device and other devices we will cover later. In this video we are only going to talk about using the CPU and the memory. And when these two devices are taken together as a unit we might call it a basic processing unit. Now a few remarks on using just these two devices of a computer. It is a rich field, it might be called classic programming. Uh, it might be regarded as a separate field altogether within computer science called computational computer science. The first computers that were built were basically like this. And there's, an, there's a fascinating theorem about this, that as long as we have all the input we need, and we have enough memory and time, all computations can be done with just these two. Now, if we need a disk, if we need to persist some data, if we need a screen, if we need input, if we need multiple processing units, or we need to communicate over the internet, then of course we would need to connect these to one of the devices below. But in this video, we're only talking about using a CPU and a memory, and that is a single CPU and a single array of memory. So memory is basically one list of entries. In one of the locations, uh, in one sequence of locations in memory, we can store our program. In other sequences of memory, we can store our input, our output, and our working memory. The input is what the program will use when it starts. The output is what the program will write to before it ends. And the working memory is memory that the computer will work with as it is solving the problem and producing the output. The CPU will start running the program at the start. And when the CPU reaches the end of the program, there's hopefully some useful result in the output section of memory. Let's run through an example. The example we will uh, cover is to find the first position of a character in a string. This is a classic, simple, computational problem. The input of this uh, problem is a string that we will place here in memory and a character that we will locate within the string. The output of this program is first of all a boolean that tells us whether or not we found the character. If we did not fi find the character, then found will be false and the position value will not matter. If we did find uh, the character within the string, found will be true and the position will be the position, the first position of the character in the string. We also need some working variables. This is often also called uh, local variables of the function or the program. Uh, we will use a single uh, variable i uh, as our working variable. We can group these three sections of a memory together into one section of memory and this is all the memory that the program will need to run and to compute its result. Here we have the complete program that finds the first position uh, of a character in the string. Now in this function we can see that we take the pointer to the memory area as the only input. And the reason for this is that this is all the memory that we will need to solve our problem and to return our results. First we set the found variable to false. So this means if we do not find the character, uh, false will just remain, uh, found will just remain false. Then we will go through our loop, we will use our working variable i, set it to 0, and then check whether the current variable, uh, the current entry in the array is 0, which means that we have come to the end of the string in C. If we have found the entry of uh, the string that contains our character, we will end the loop. And we will of course increase our counter. 
Within the loop, we will check whether the current element is equal to the character that we want to find. If we find the character, we will set found to, to true and then the position to i. Then the loop will end and we have solved the problem. This is how we would use this uh, function. First, we allocate the memory that we need. Then we set the problem uh, we want to solve. We, we have the string hello world and we want to find the character w. Then we run our computational program and then we print out our results below, whether we found the position and if we found the position, the actual position that we found. Notice that this is the only purely computational part of this program. This section here prints to the screen. So this means that we are connected to a screen and that will be covered in a later uh, video. This is the contents of the program uh, section of uh, memory. Uh, this was produced by a C compiler. Um, over at the leftmost side here, we can see the actual numbers that will be stored in memory. And on the right side, we will see uh, the assembly language, the Intel assembly language that these numbers encode. Now here on the left side, we can see the program uh, written with, a, with an explicit memory region. And on the other side, we can see the more classic C version. Now, a few interesting things to notice here. Um, we can see that in C, uh, this part of the function defines the input and output variables. The output variables are split in two. We have the return variable, whether or not a character was found. And then we need to pass a pointer to return a second uh, value. Uh, The found variable is returned down here. And then we have our working variable here as a local variable. So this was one example, but any computation works like this, basically. Uh, I will make a whole later series dedicated to just using a CPU and memory, uh, or in other words, using a basic processing unit. In the next video, we're going to cover how to connect a basic processing unit to a disk and how basic interactions with disks work. The content of this series is based on the book Foundations of Computer Science. So check it out if you like the contents of these videos. Thank you.